Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to share my five reasons why I think the Amiga Seamaster is probably the best first luxury timepiece because this is a question I get asked, uh, well, almost daily. Uh, so I thought I'd make this video today. Now, before I get into this video, first of all, quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Navi timer. Yeah, what can I say? I still got it on that beautiful cognac, German made. Uh, aviation strap. If you missed the review of this, have a look. This is by far my favorite. Uh, so that's wristwatch check. Also, a quick shout out to my friend Amaro who bought me this. Thank you so much, my friend. I love it. Absolutely adore it. Thank you so much. That beautiful Hukusei wave. As you guys know, I'm a massive uh, SKX, Sega SKX fan, and uh, this was part of the inspiration for that very typical Japanese motif on a lot of the Seiko divers. So very, very cool gift. And actually, he gave me another gift, but I'll save that for another video. So big shout out to you, my friend. I'm gonna really enjoy this. Uh, just fantastic, look at that. Anyway, uh, also, before we roll the intro, I should give a little disclaimer. There's a ton of construction work going on outside, so if you're gonna hear drilling and banging and all the rest of it, I'm just gonna have to carry on. So do bear with me, I do apologize. Hopefully next week, I might change to another location or, or something, because it's just it's starting to get a little horrendous. They have stopped right now, but yeah. Anyway, fingers crossed, I'm gonna try and make this quick. All right guys, let's roll the intro. reasons why the Amiga Seamaster is the best first luxury timepiece. Now, uh, as you guys know, I've owned and I currently own a vintage model, but I've owned, I think, seven or eight Seamasters, all different types. Um, and actually that kind of, that kind of is one of the reasons we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. So why is this a great first luxury timepiece? Okay, so let's start off with uh, my number one reason. First of all, the price, the value for money. Uh, you guys know I recently bought a, another vintage Omega here. This is not a Seamaster, although you can find Seamasters at the same price range. This was only just under $400. You can spend as little as $500, $400, all the way into the thousands for the newer models. So I think for the price, the sheer amount of bang per buck, the, the what you get for the for your money is unbeatable. And I still think, if I look back at my very first luxury watch, and this is actually some of the inspiration behind this video, my first real luxury timepiece, this was before I had a channel, this was in my late teens, or was it early 20s, I forget. But anyway, it was an Amiga Seamaster, it was the mid-size classic 90s bond with the wave dial and I remember thinking I could distinctly feel the quality. A little 36 millimeter, the automatic version and I bought it for only 400 bucks. Now I had a look recently on eBay and you can still find them for as low as 500 bucks used obviously. They're gonna be a little beaten up but I mean a true diving watch with an automatic Swiss made 500 bucks is very, very difficult to beat. The ceramic Seamasters, you can get these for an absolute bargain on the used market for a few grand, two to three grand. Value for money, affordability, we've got to have it in there. Okay, so let's move on to point number two. 
and that is the variety in the range. There is just so many different types of Seamasters. I mean, if you look back at the early Seamasters, they were a little bit more dressy in the 50s. Uh, they weren't the, the dive watches that they evolved into into the 60s. We'll get into the history in just a moment. Yeah, you know, if you want to go with more contemporary, they've now got the ceramic versions. There's uh, different types of movements, the coaxials, the manual winds of the early Seamasters. If we compare it to the Rolex Submariner, for example, and, and we're going to make comparisons, it's, it's inevitable, right? The Seamaster has evolved to such a dramatic extent. Uh, I've owned the GMT version and the complications as well. You don't really get uh, Submariners with a GMT. You don't, you know? You don't get um, Submariners with a chronograph. You know, and I've owned the chronograph version and you can still pick them up for an absolute bargain, about two to three grand. I love that watch. That's probably the Seamaster I owned for the longest time. Vajou 7750 based. A uh, bit of a chunky one, I think that was my second Seamaster, then I went Quartz, and that's another thing, you know, you got the variation in the movements from the modern coaxial to the Quartz of the Bond era or before. And let's not forget that some of the vintage Amiga Seamaster chronographs are the most affordable way for you to own the prestigious 321 chronograph movement. A far cheaper option than you will ever find them in a Speedmaster in terms of its variety. I don't think there's a range of watches that is so dramatically um, wide in its range. I mean, really a dynamic range of offerings. So that is definitely my number two. Okay, number three, and that's got to do with the history of the Speedmaster, sorry, sorry, whoops, <laughs> the Seamaster. Um, if I said Speedmaster before, sorry, I do apologize. Anyway, yeah, the history of the Seamaster started in 1948. They are Amiga's longest running line in their collection. They started in 1948 to mark the 100th anniversary of uh, the Amiga brand. The history is so rich. I mean, it was originally designed for uh, the British military. And, but not only the history of who has worn it, but also the, the list of innovations. Their revolutionary new gasket designs back, way back in the 50s, to right up to the present day with the coaxial, with, with the famous coaxial movement, which I talked about in my Planet Ocean review. Um, if you missed out, have a, have a look at that as well. It's also broken many diving records. You only have to look at uh, Jacques Cousteau's involvement with Amiga. Many, many explorers. Not to mention it being the, the watch of choice with the SAS in the 60s. And that says a hell of a lot for a watch. When the SAS choose it, it's, it means it's robust. It means it's trusted for accuracy, for precision. People's lives, not just in diving, but in a military context, in the field of battle, these watches are trusted on, and that is a massive sign of approval. And as the brand has evolved, in fact, actually, guys, I, I printed this out. Do check out um, AmigaMuseum.com for if you want a really interesting, uh, horologically rich history of the Seamaster. It goes into huge detail, fantastic website, and not only do they cover the Seamaster, but a wide range, all, all of the Amigas. Um, but if we just rush for it here, one of my favorite stories in the history of the Seamaster. In 1956, they were so confident of the Seamaster's robustness in terms of dealing with uh, changes in pressure, in air pressure, in uh, temperature variation, they actually strapped their watch, a, uh, a Seamaster, to the outside of a Douglas DC-6 aircraft in 1956 uh, and flew to prove how tough it was. There you go. You can hear the drilling. I apologize. We're just going to soldier on. We're going to soldier on. Like, like the Seamaster, we're going to soldier on regardless. Then if we move fast forward to the 60s, there's the release of the Omega professional line with the 300. I've also reviewed amazing, beautiful, beautiful watch. Then we have Jacques Cousteau's involvement. Uh, many, many tons of, of diving records were broken. Famous Comex research and exploration team. It was their choice as well. I mean, the list is endless. And then in the 70s, of course, we have the Plo Prof. Just such a dramatic uh, 
variation in design and always bringing something new to the table which is something I really appreciate uh, about the Seamaster line. I think actually it's history. When we think of Omega uh, the, the emphasis is always especially with their marketing on the Speedmaster it really does take the limelight and we forget a little bit about just how uh, amazing and rich the history of the Seamaster was. It should be talked about more. So anyway, that is my third point. Guys, if you want to find out more, um, I do I do recommend checking out the AmigaMuseum.com website. It's a wonderful read, utterly fa fascinating. If you're a fan of the Seamaster, there's a lot of stuff. Even I didn't know that that was just a pleasure to learn about. Anyways, I'll, I'll add a link to, in the description. But also, in pop culture, in the 90s, of course, we saw the emergence of the Amiga Seamaster becoming the Bond watch. And that really, I, I've got I've to admit, guys, I mean, that, that's what inspired me in part as well, you know. And, and the coolness rubs off. I mean, I, I was in my late teens, early 20s. And it mattered to me. I wanted to wear something cool. It's become an icon in the mainstream. I mean, it's it's a very recognizable brand because of this product placement. But I think it's worked well. I mean, it's a great choice for a Bond watch. Okay, so number three, that was history. Number four, let's move on to number four. Um, it's a very usable watch. Ultimately, you know, thinking back to my Seamasters, what I loved about them as a young man, they were robust, they could take a beating. I mean, my little mid-size and actually my, my the, the chronograph I had, they really did take a beating. When you're young and active, they match the lifestyle. In terms of sartorially and stylistically, the aesthetic, they were very versatile. I, you know, Bond was the first to do this with a with a dive watch, although it being a Rolex back in when was it Doctor No and all the rest of the the Connery days. What I did like a, a, about the new Bond as well, it works wonderfully in both smart and casual attire. He wore the watch in different situations. You can wear it with a tux. I know it's a faux pas, but you can, you know. Especially the, what I loved about the quartz version I used to have, it was quite slender, it did slide under the cuff. And I think the, the 90s Seamasters were kind of dressy, there is an elegance to them, there is an elegance to them. Sorry, I apologise about the drilling. New York, what can I say? So it ticks a lot of boxes, in essence, you know, the, the dive watch is always a great choice for a young man. Uh, or a young lady, I mean, you know, it could be for anyone, but because they're usable, the, the, the dive timing bezel is a fantastic rudimentary timing device. I've worn divers in everyday life and used the, the bezel for timing jogging or just basic things like cooking even. I know it sounds, I mean, how many of us are really going to dive? I can't dive because of my lung condition, but uh, I, I, I have used uh, diving watches, actual, actually diving way, way many years ago before a channel, well, I had the channel and uh, a little bit sad I will never do that again. My love and appreciation for the robustness and, and ruggedness of divers has not diminished. I still think they are one of the best, most versatile genres of watch because simply if, if I had to have one type of watch it would be a diver. Don't get me wrong, I love my aviation watches, I love my chronographs, I love my dress watches uh, to a lesser extent. Sports watches will be, always be my favourite but the diver really is man's best friend. You know, a, a, a dog and a dive watch, that's all really you need in life. Okay, number five, so that was number four. Number five, brand recognition. What do I mean by this? Uh, and it's a tricky one because I don't want to fall into the snobbery trap because you know that, you know me, I'm not into that. Amiga, without a doubt, is one of the world's most instantly recognizable brands. I mean, you don't have to be a watch enthusiast or connoisseur to know Amiga. Many, many people know Amiga, and especially nowadays with the pop culture and Bond, it's certainly uh, even more so uh, recognizable. God, this drilling, it's terrible. Can you guys hear that? It's really not, I mean, I can hear it because this is directional, this microphone, but 
It doesn't stop, it doesn't stop, anyway. So why does brand recognition matter? Well, I think ultimately, a part of buying watches, and you know, let's be honest, we do want to wear a watch we're proud of. And when you wear an Amiga watch, you, you can be proud of that history, you can be proud of that, the prestige of wearing a, a, such a wonderful, and important horologically. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly significant brand. We cannot deny that. And no other brand is a, as accessible as Omega, certainly a, lux a luxury Swiss brand. I mean, the fact is you can spend, and I keep coming back to this point, but for the twice the price of the average fashion watch, you can buy an Omega watch, a used Omega watch. This is fact. And I'm going to keep saying it time and time again because more people need to know this. Wow. I, I'm really sorry about this. I'm going <laughs> to get it carry on. Anyway, and why does that matter? Because you can hand it down to the next generation. Uh, you can be proud of it. And look, you know, if you put off buying a fashion watch for a month, save a little bit more, you know, you can buy an Amiga watch. A, a quality Swiss, uh, horologically significant. So brand recognition is important. It's not everything. I, I wouldn't buy a brand just for, for the logo. I mean, I, I wouldn't advise that. You, at the end of the day, you've got to buy what you love. And if you love the fashion watch more, that's absolutely fine. Buy the fashion watch. What I'm saying is that not enough people know that you can get an Amiga watch for $400. You can go on eBay right now, it's the time of filming this video, and buy a, a, a Seamaster, um, you know, a Bond Seamaster for as little as $500. And guys, let's not forget, you know, a little Seamaster, much like this one, uh, for five, six hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, the 200 series, 300 series movements. So you're getting an in-house Swiss made, this is before Swatch. This is the more Madman-esque 60s classic Amigas before they became, were evolved into serious dive watches. But that's another great thing about the brand, you know, stylistically, if you wanna go more dressy, you don't have to go with a diver style. Very few brands offer this much, all of this you know, in one line of watches. Anyway guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know your favorite uh, Amiga Seamasters in the comments below. I'd love to hear what was your first luxury watch, especially, it doesn't have to be Amiga, but uh, what do you recommend as a first luxury watch, especially under a thousand dollars, a thousand, actually let's say from five hundred dollars up to 2000. I think Seamaster, Amiga Seamaster rules the roost, definitely, in my opinion. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, hopefully construction willing, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.